As a sci-fientist trademark, I like when stories try to make magic work. How do you like that silver? Your ancestors called it magic, but you call it science. What do you mean? My mustache was never always never not there. The tension between magic and science is especially good in Arcane, the best thing about League of Legends aside from it having no voice chat. But in stories like this, can magic and science ever truly coexist? Or is their compatibility not viable? <laughs> Arya, stay off the microphone. You'll scare all the gamers away. Now entering the facility. I like the science of the magic in Arcane because it's basically an allegory for nuclear weapons. A few scientists find something incredibly powerful and world-changing, and they have to come to terms with that, as do the politicians. It's not the most revolutionary take in storytelling, but with animation this good, I don't care. Hextech is where magic and science meet in the Arcaniverse. It's powered by hex crystals, which are little pieces of magically infused stuff that make for some truly amazingly animated fight scenes. However, in Arcane, the magic is in the crystals. In the real world, where is magic hiding? We will define magic here as some suspension of the natural order. Something is magical if it somehow upends, circumvents, or otherwise changes the known laws of the universe for any amount of time. Most people believe in some sort of this suspension, whether that take the form of ghosts, spirits, demons, psychics, or astrology. Notice that these events or entities are almost always on the margins. Magical things only seem to occur in the dead of night, or alone, or in your own mind. In other words, magic isn't front and center in our lives like it is in Arcane. So again, if it does exist, where is it hiding? Though the universe is still incomprehensible in so many ways, dark matter, quantum gravity, how Tylenol actually works, scientists have done a pretty darn good job probing it. We have observed phenomena as small as quantum tunnels and as large as colliding black holes. We have measured radio signals as soft as falling snowflakes and gamma ray bursts as energetic as a billion Death Stars. What I'm getting at is that if magic does exist, if there are places where the natural order is suspended, there simply can't be that many of them. A graph like this shows this pretty well. Look at how much science spans. We have explored literally a hundred octovigintillion different energy regimes and we have not found any. Hocus pocus abracadabra. I ask you, where is it? Hand fire. That wasn't magic. I exploded something. Okay, but what if magic isn't like a weird energy thing and it's more like a weird matter thing? Well, here too, scientists have observed a wider range of stuff than you think. On these graphs of temperature and particle density, we can categorize everything from room temperature air to solids to fusion to stars. I ask again, where is the room for the otherworldly here? And remember, ectoplasm is not a state of matter. Okay, okay, but what if magic isn't like a weird matter thing and it's more like a weird force thing? I think you know where I'm going with this. As far as we can tell, there are four fundamental forces in the universe. They dominate regimes as small as an atom and as large as the universe itself. In the hundreds of years since modern science has existed, we haven't observed anything that appears to add to this list. Of course, the counter argument to all of this is that magic exists outside of everything that we have so far observed. The magic that allows you to accidentally kill your friends via monkey clap clap is just not on the radar for science. However, we don't exist in those unobservable realms, do we? We live in a so-called middle world, as Richard Dawkins once put it. In terms of energy and velocity and lifetime, we're not very big and we don't go very fast and we don't live very long. If magic truly exists in our realm, it should be very easy to observe it. You shouldn't have to imagine dragons, so to speak. It should be really obvious. Everyone wants to be their enemy. I gotta be honest, Arya, after hearing it that many times, I kind of like it now. Not that much. But now, don't get me wrong. 
I would love a pair of gauntlets that somehow got lighter and more powerful once you turned them on. I think if you could traverse time and space instantaneously, it would revolutionize pretty much everything. The real problem with magic, aside from the fact that it doesn't seem to be anywhere that we can observe with science, is that it's inconsistent. What allows the process of science to be so powerful is that the laws of physics are invariant, or they don't change. If they did, some scientist born in a different time and place could, for example, find that Newton's laws of motion no longer apply where they are. But that's never happened. The laws of physics are time invariant, the same across time, translationally invariant, the same across space, and rotationally invariant, the same no matter which direction you're facing. Emmy Noether, described by Einstein as the most important woman in the history of mathematics, took this invariance and further proved that if the laws of physics hold in this way, then energy, momentum, and angular momentum must be conserved respectively. Magic is not invariant. It does different things at different times and places. Magic is not conserved. Energy and matter appear from nothing. So for magic to be possible in the real world, the laws of physics would have to break not once, but twice. First in conservation, and then in variance. Needless to say, we don't have any good evidence that this fundamental suspension of the natural order has ever happened. Oh yeah? What about that time when you got to host a Mythbusters show? Yeah, I, I honestly don't know how that happened. Can still get into premieres though! Woo! But Kyle, if magic can't exist in our real world, can we still make it work in the Arcanaverse world? First of all, fun voice, no notes. Second of all, sure, why not? Hextech is powered by so-called hex crystals, which are magic-infused, extremely energy-dense, volatile little pieces of stuff. The first thing that I think of when I think of hex is similar. Extremely energy dense, extremely dangerous, and the rarest substance ever created. Antimatter. Even rarer than a non toxic League of Legends game? Even rarer than that. In theory, antimatter is the ultimate source of energy. This oppositely charged matter completely annihilates when it comes into contact with regular matter and releases energy according to Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. As you can see, any amount of mass is going to lead to a lot of energy because the speed of light squared is a colossal number. For example, if the crystals that powder finds in Arcane Season 1 were in fact antimatter, then each one of those little things would have the ability to turn Piltover into a crater literally this size. No wonder little mustache dude was so afraid of them. Oh, Jace, I don't know if the magic in the science can... <coughs> in terms of raw energy density, antimatter is the most powerful energy source in the universe. That power comes with a price. Just like in Arcane, antimatter is completely unstable in that it will annihilate if it comes into contact with regular matter, anything, even the atoms in the air. Scientists can create it, but they have a hard time keeping it around. The current record is held by CERN, 405 days of antiprotons contained in a so-called penning trap. This is a device that keeps charged antiparticles in place with electromagnetic fields at near absolute zero and in high vacuum, so that the particles don't annihilate with the matter in the walls of the trap or anything inside. We've only been able to do this with just a handful of particles though, nothing you'd be able to see or indeed hold in your hand. Still, antimatter is the closest thing that we know of to hex. Totally unstable, unbelievably powerful. Kind of like magic. At the end of the day, though, the non-magical thing that Hextech is doing is providing near-unlimited energy from a very small energy source. We already have that. It's called... Oh boy, here it comes. Nuclear power. Nuclear power plants are very large facilities, like hex gates in Arcane, but the power source is even smaller than hex crystals. Look at these little uranium fuel pellets. That's where we get nuclear power from, just these little things. The amount of energy that you can get from just one uranium fuel pellet across its lifetime of fission is equivalent to burning 120 gallons of oil or 1,000 kilograms of coal. All that just from this little thing, and a lot of physics and engineering. It's not magic. That's science, baby. What about shimmer, <laughs> that chemical in arcane that makes people all crazy? 
Oh, that's an easy one, Aria. Uh, those are drugs. Drugs make, can make you do that. Stay in school, kids. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy members of the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to drape on some silky white punchy gauntlets, if you want to get videos early, join our private Discord, get members only live streams with me each month, go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name in every single video, whether it's on Aria or at the end credits of something tragic that I'm talking about. <laughs> As you can see, there's so, so many of you. I have no idea how I'm going to. If you haven't watched Arcane yet, I don't know when you're watching this video, but it should be coming out before the final episodes of the first installment of Arcane. Go watch this show. It is so good. I have never played League of Legends, and it's so good. The acting, Ella Purnell, uh, Haley Seinfeld, uh, the, the animation blows my mind. It somehow got even better in the second season and it's delivering on what fans wanted, mostly in respect to um, plot development. And honestly, the animation looks like every single frame took years. It's incredible. Go watch it. Thank Thanks for watching.